In the most recent patch of TFT, Riot Games decided to nerf some of the champions and traits that were taking over the metagame, but decided for some reason to enable one of the most egregiously OP augments ever made, Everything Must Go. This augment was terrorizing all of PBE, and many people were saying it was way too good as a silver, it's way too good as a gold, and it's probably way too good as a prismatic. It's over 9,000! In this episode of Into Deep, we're going to hop on board with one of France's top players to show you just how OP this augment is, and probably why it's not going to stay around for very long. So grab that free LP while you can. Volterix is one of the most accomplished French players of all time. He's made it to four world championships and has top aided in the final lobby a couple times. Even made it as recently to the set 10 world championship, but unfortunately flamed out a little bit on the early side. Starts off immediately with two fortune three costs. My God, Tristana and Zoe. Just give him the Kabuko. There you go, right? Immediately hitting the three fortune. Okay, so it's already a fortune high roll opener, but hey, you're going to eventually start off with fortune every now and then. So it's actually a two for one. Get to learn how to play everything must go as well as a fortune opener. But the nice thing about three cost champion openers is that in this portal, you get to sell it for three gold. And sometimes you get to make 10 gold really early. And those are the kinds of spots that you want to start off with everything must go because you want as much econ as possible. We're playing our fortune and we roll a six, which means that we lose all of stage two plus three one, bringing us to three two is when we're going to have our next Next decision point he's gonna want to cash out a lot of gold so maybe not go for the full cash out but we'll see pausing on his augment choices at this point in the game volterix does not know that he's gonna be taking everything must go so we should kind of play and talk about it as if we don't know that's gonna happen yet to start things off one two threes is two purposes one you get to play around like a bunch of one cost and two cost and maybe you two start them early and play for tempo and then two you get to make economy because you can sell the extra champions you don't need on the bench to make gold early so that's that is one possible way they could play the setup which could be strong but a lot of the advantage of one two three is not really existent because he's basically going to sell everything anyways because he already knows what he's going to play with his opener with fortune so if you know that you're going to have a fortune opener and you're going to lose streak why do you even want to look at those champions when you're going to sell them anyways so another way you can look at it is this gives you one two three plus four plus three so you get 10 gold the pack's actually kind of nice because we're playing fortune anyway so we're going to lose a lot of hp so i'm already looking towards the pack because we're going to fortune lose streak so it kind of leans into what we want to do anyways. And then Pandora's items is okay, but something that is going to be kind of awkward because in order to save these items, we're going to have to put them onto our champions, which the only ones might be the ones on the board. And that might accidentally make us stronger than we want to with Fortune. Because as you know, with Fortune, as I mentioned in the previous video, you don't want to win with it. And the more items you're slamming with Pandora's onto the board, the more likely you are to win. So I think Stimpak is the clear winner here. We reroll the other two augments just to see in case anything changes our mind. There are possibities that we find something better than Stimpak, but I think it's unlikely. Item grab bag, not that good right now because we still don't even know what we want to play out of Fortune. And then sharing is caring. This augment is generally a lot weaker ever since they nerfed it to one gold. So uh, generally, I don't advise picking it, but sometimes you feel like you want that economy. You can take it if your spot is really bad. So we take Stimpak, and now we're most likely going to just sell everything. Can we make actually 10 gold? Two, four, five, six more. Ah, we cannot actually. We're going to sell it to nine gold. So we're going to scatter around a little bit here, and we see another person has fortune. So we're going to actually trap a unit in the corner. We're going to put our range units in front of Kabuko, and that way we're going to fight two on three because Kabuko can't get into the action, and then he'll join a little bit later on. So it's a small way for you to give yourself the disadvantage in a fight. You can see Kabuko's not engaging whatsoever. There's a little bit of counterplay to this. You could actually try to pull some of those units away by making sure that you don't have any units in the front center. So that way the range units have to walk up to confront the other range units. So if you're playing a fortune mirror where you know your opponent's doing the exact same thing, you basically just want to make sure to play the weakest board possible and make sure to prioritize which unit you think is going to die first. The thing is, is the opponent is playing a two-star Kabuko, so they are going to be a little bit stronger, so you have that guarantee. All right, it looks like we're going to have a slow early game, so I'm going to go ahead and show you a slide of what I think is the best way to approach Everything Must Go. So here's a quick rundown of how to approach everything must go. Because your units buy and sell for zero gold, you're going to have to spend your gold only on rerolling and leveling instead. Which means managing your economy is really important and sending to zero for any reason 
is usually the all in that you can't really come back from. So don't spend your gold unless you absolutely have to or feel like you need to roll a significant amount to get stronger. As such, it's best on high resource portals like gold subscription, crab rave, or loot subscription. Gold openers in general, which is just helping you get to 10 really fast on stage one and stage two. So you're making your first interest threshold. Or free reroll augments that are really good, or even encounters. If you're able to bank rerolls, it's a really powerful way to capitalize on everything must go. Focus on making the interest break points early, meaning trying to get your gold to 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 as fast as you can. Keep a full bench during PV to convert units into gold. This is because if you have a full bench instead of getting a unit on the bench you convert that into like three to four gold and that's a really big deal because if you get a unit on the bench you sell it and guess what it sells for zero gold so make sure you keep a full bench and buy out that shop get to level eight with lots of hp and gold and then scout for an uncontested four cost but you also can play for three star three cost if you really want such as rerolling duelist where you go for a Tristana, a Vola Bear, and a Diana 3, and maybe some extras. But most of the time, you're going to be playing instead for a 4 cost 3 star. All right, so now we're back in Volta Land, and we are losing anyways, so we haven't really missed much. Pretty classic Fortune Lost streak, and notice that we're not picking anything up. We don't have Sever, we don't have Rek'Sai, we're not picking up extra Trick Shot and Bruiser, for example. And that's because we want to play the weakest board possible, knowing that another Fortune player in. If we knew that we were clear to lose streak because everyone's playing their best board, you could play another unit to try and kill one extra unit. Because even if you get one extra kill per round, that is two HP across the entire stage. That's 10 life. If you do that in two stages, that's 20 life. That's, that's a lot of HP that you could be preserving. So something to think about if you aren't being contested on your fortune loss streak. He takes bow, which is a generically good uh, item to take. And also something to think about when you're playing fortune is that if you're playing like a fortune crest, you have the option of trying to take something that complements the fortune. In this case, he has Zoe, Tristana, and Kabuko. You could take Teemo off carousel and then put the fortune crest on the fifth unit and then play five fortune, you know, in the, in the mid stage of the game. Those are like some ways you can play carousel. You can take the item or you can take the champion pending on the spot. Okay, we scouted the other fortune player and now we cross our fingers and hope that we don't queue up into them. We did. It's Zoe and Tristana versus Zoe and Teemo. And it looks like we're a little bit ahead in terms of the unit count but that teemo mushroom is just draining and doing a lot of damage and tristana is gonna cast but not kill and that is huge that is huge we're able to preserve our loss streak we're stopping our opponent's fortune loss streak and we also just played them so we can actually level and beat krugs and not worry about getting too strong a lot of times if you haven't played the other fortune player you're worried about like leveling because you're at level five and then you're like you're wasting gold are you playing too many units? You have to sell more units. It's really, really awkward. Make sure you beat Krugs, by the way. Very important tip. It is not okay to lose by one Krug. And it looks like we're going to sell it to 40 gold. One more loss, and we're finishing our fortune cash, at least the first wave of it. And then we have to ask ourselves what we really want off 3-2. On 3-2, we're looking for Tiny Titans, but chances of civil server aren't very high. And in this spot, we're just basically trying to figure out when are we going to power spike? Because the problem with rolling another fortune die is if we get six again, that means we have to lose out on until 4-5 or at least lose a good amount until 4-5 and that's going to put us in a tough spot so I'm curious what Volterix is going to do going into 3-2 because he took a really bad loss here this is 5 oh, didn't kill single units and now he's to figure out what he wants to do with fortune and if he can have an augment that follows up on it because if he rolls really high on the next fortune die he could be in trouble okay let's take a look at the augments here we have heavy hitters know your enemy and crash test dummies heavy hitters is a reroll based augment and i don't think he's necessarily in a position to reroll the closest thing he could reroll is maybe tristana because out of fortune you really think about playing two things right now which is duelist since you have tristana or trick shots uh or preaching kaisa because you have timo and so those are two things you usually want to play around is this a spot where you could play tristana i guess you could slam last whisper and Maybe use those vests for defensive items, but it's not it's not particularly super good. You could also go for like Titans, but you don't have Bloodthirster for Vola Bear, so it's kind of awkward. Know your enemy is okay. It kind of depends on what traits you're playing because if the lobby's not sharing with you, it's kind of mid because you get so much more damage if your traits are shared. So something to keep in mind. I think it's a little bit harder to take, but it could be good as a backup. Crash Test Dummies is generically good. I think you can always take Crash Test Dummies. The only problem is that if he wants to go for a loose streak again with Fortune, if he wants to roll a die and just say, hey, I want to go for like a three or four, Crash Test Dummies might end up being kind of hard to plan around because it might end up making him a little bit too strong. I don't think that's going to be 
the case because he just played the fortune player, but something to think about. Okay, so he rerolls and he hits everything must go, which is the whole point of this video. So in this point, he definitely takes this augment. But let's go ahead and see what else he rolls. He rolls shock treatment and you have my sword. And those are just nowhere near as powerful as everything must go from an econ perspective, right? He's been making a lot of gold. He's been loose streaking. He's about to get a fortune cash out. This has to be the pick. Shock treatment is a lot weaker because it's supposed to be good early by giving you extra flat damage. And so it's lower value on 3-2. And he has so many components anyways from fortune. He doesn't need you have my sword. Okay, so now we're at cash out versus your push your luck. Let's see what he picks here. He pushes his luck and he gets a one. Oh, that's, that's really awkward because now if he chooses to cash out next turn, he's still not at that major threshold that we talked about with like 50 and 75. But if he rolls again, now he has one fewer number that he is comfortable with. Now, four, five, six is really uncomfortable because losing four more means that you're going to start the game at like, you know, 20 HP and that can be really dicey no pun intended actually so now he has to decide again next round but he's playing everything must go so like if he does end up taking a 30 set cash out it could be kind of good let's look at the fortune loot table here on tft hub at 30 luck you get a tome of traits and 10 gold which i guess can be good if you do end up getting a trait that's really powerful for you but you can't get something like trick shot and i think he wants to go towards trick shots because i don't think he's going to reroll three four cost champions completed i'm on two gold so another way to think about this is 12 gold although he's playing everything must go so he can't actually sell them and then random component plus six gold which could be really powerful as well if he wants to lose one more he unlocks even more gold opportunities more four cost radiant items five random components so the power jump from 30 to 40 seems pretty significant so i'm really curious what he wants to do now okay so we're going to cash out and we get the four costs and components we get annie lilia and syndra and remember we can't sell these units for gold we don't have to pay for champions but we also don't get any benefits from uh, selling the champions. We're going to take out Lilia and play Annie and stack Annie as a tank for now and start to play around Ash. Okay, and we have Rage Bay, Last Whisper, IE Ash. So I think this is a nod to the fact that Ash is a champion that's not really played very often. And so he's playing around what he thinks based on his scouting one of the less contested four costs that he could roll for. And this brings us to another really important slide that I want to bring up very quickly during his carousel. The tier list for four cost three stars is basically based on what is the most popular units for the patch. And so right now, currently on patch 14.7b, there are five four costs that people are rarely playing. In S tier, we have Lily and Nautilus because they are really weak currently in the metagame to play as your primary game plan. And even if you are playing Lily and Nautilus, you're trying to transition out of them as soon as you can. The only composition that wants to play around this right now is Kog'Maw. And I feel like they are the most common three stars you're going to be hitting. In A tier, you have Annie, Ash, and Silas because the comps that do play them, they aren't even the high priority. And unless they're trying to play like a fortune cash out or they're purposely trying to play porcelain or even if they're playing like long term with around bruisers, these are just not really the stars of the comp. And so you might be able to sneak in a three star of them. The probably not tier is the unit that gets splashed into a bunch of compositions or they're just really commonly played. Like you're not going to play Faded without Syndra. So chances are it's going to be hard to hit it but there's a possibility that you could just don't really expect that. And then the definitely not tier. I mean, it's Kaisa, Galio, Kane, Orn. Every lobby is going to have Kaisa players. They're going to have Storyweaver players. They're going to have Reapers that want Kane or Ghostly. And then Orange is the best four cost frontliner in general. So it's just going to be really hard to hit some of these units. So these are the ones you're probably not going to hold very much. But the caveat is you can hold on to them. So that way you can grief your opponents. If you know that there's going to be people that want to play Kaisa, Hold those Kaisas, because holding even two on your bench is going to be a really big deal for other people trying to hit Kaisa too. Okay, teleporting back over to Volta. He is currently on the carousel, and here are all the four costs that he's willing to look for. He's looking for pretty much everything that we said in the SNA tier, but there might have been a faded player, so Syndra is probably not going to be a unit that he looks for, and that's okay, right? There's, there's probably, you know, four or five units that everyone... Uh, is not going to be playing in the lobby, so scout accordingly. He also slams Asterix Gauge onto Annie, which is an improved item. It is something you can play kind of as like a secondary form of Warmogs. He has three items on Ash already, so what is he going to commit the sword item to, right? So in his mind, he's thinking, just get three items on Annie. Asterix Gauge is good enough to just kind of get her going, and she does auto attack a decent amount, so... Maybe she ends up doing more DPS this way. And now he's at the point where he's at level 740, econing up, very strong, don't want to dip below. Because the problem is, if you leveled and you were at like 20 gold, you just take a long time to get to 50, and you have to roll that excess gold. This is the Alune Encounter, which empowers one tier of champion for you. So 
the two three four costs this is pretty straightforward we're gonna reroll four costs so it's got to be the four costs nothing too complicated if you're rerolling duelist or three costs you probably go for three costs instead another thing to consider about having a full bench is that the extra units that you get from orbs like on these wolves will turn into gold and that's a good thing because we can't sell those champions for gold anyways and so you want to keep a full bench. This is in contrast to the usual situation where you want to free up bench space in case those orbs have valuable champions. So you see how he's taking orbs and everything's turning into gold. And now that is gold that we can use to roll for four costs. Another thing we're thinking about is that you can play Exalted to get extra EXP and that ends up helping you save a little bit of gold. But try not to force it too much. It can be a little bit difficult to get Exalted online and have a way to preserve your board strength. We won the past couple fights and now we are off to the races. We're going to get to level eight and we're going to roll now, the trick is, what is he going to pick on the 4-2 augment and how much gold is he going to roll? Infernal Contract is really interesting. It gives us a lot of what we want, but Infernal Contract has one problem. Your max level is at 7, and so we're going to have to roll for 3 costs instead of 4 because the odds are so much better for 3 costs and 4 costs. So I think that is a no-go. Accomplice is generically good. One of the best augments in the game, period. And the Support Thieves Cubs ends up being better than things like Stationary Support because the random outcomes ends up being something that you can min-max in a very powerful way. And Baboom is okay, but it's situationally good for different carries depending on how fast they cast. I don't think Baboom is particularly good with like Ash, for example. Ooh, Hedge Fund Plus versus Accomplice. Uh, it's probably not Final Ascension because Final Ascension, again, just it doesn't necessarily fit our team comp because we're not trying to stall necessarily. Final Ascension is really good for specific comps that focus on like infinite stall. So like Faded, for example, that gives you a ton of resistances by having Thresh be linked with Yasuo or Set. That's a comp that you want to play Final Ascension with. Hedge Fund is much more along the lines of what we want to do. And we get to make more max interest threshold, which is really fascinating. The problem with Hedge Fund is that we don't have a lot of HP. If you took Hedge Fund, you had the opportunity of leveling to 8 and like greeting and then rolling like above 100 or rolling above 70, 80, whatever your greed threshold is. Then you can actually get like all the four cost three stars, not even just a little bit. Accomplice might be too good for tempo though. Like we are very rich already. Oh, but Hedge Fund is so tempting. Okay, I'm really curious what he's gonna pick. I think I would personally go for Accomplice, but the YouTuber in me wants to go for Hedge Fund. Okay, he goes for Accomplice. Totally reasonable because he is in a top challenger lobby and he wants to make sure that uh, he can get this done. Okay, so he rolls and he hits uncontested two stars, Lilia and Annie right now. And so that's good. He's rolling a little bit more and now is two Two starring other four costs and just playing them he ends up putting the support item onto nico and getting a zephyr there is a trick that you could do you could put that thieves gloves onto a champion on the bench see what item it's going to be and then pick someone that's more optimal to hold it because you do have the option of kind of seeing what that these guys will be and it won't change if you move it to a different unit these guys are permanent for that round and so that's always like a heads up play that you could use for future these gloves not just support but also capricious forge and regular these gloves okay so he rolls here again hits an all this too and this is important that you make sure you're stable and he wants to roll until he can hit his two stars ash is holding three items you want her to be two star so it makes sense that he's not trying to go for max greed it's a little bit weird because he has so much gold value on his bench that you feel like man like you really can't just like play at 50 but sometimes you don't really greed that nor would he roll here because rolling at 48 doesn't make sense because even if he hits a two star what is he going to play it over and now he just kind of has like build different without build different he's kind of playing like a lot of these four costs just smashing them together and tying them with loose traits and it's not like it's a real comp you're not like thinking okay i'm gonna play ash with lilia and Annie and Nautilus and Soraka like that's not a comp he's just he's just playing around the four costs that he's hitting and the items that he has for them I think itemizing around Lilia can make sense as well because he has Morello so we can go for a shiv in this spot scouting around to see no one is holding Lilia's people are holding Syndra so Syndra 3 is probably off the table finds another Annie and Ash in fact he finds multiple of them hey so now we're at five Annie's and five Lilia's and now we're pretty much just buying and selling and holding only the four costs onto the bench Orn is probably impractical although Orn would be a pretty good unit to play I think Orn would be a lot better than Nico like as the game goes on but you don't hold just every four cost I like the discernment here to recognize that he's going to play around some core synergies like Ash with the snipers and Faded and like Annie and Lilia together just kind of smashing in things together I like that he's not just saying hey like let's just roll and click on every four cost he's putting thought into it Okay, rolls and sees six Lilias. And now people are scouting him and paying attention to like what's going on, right? They're like saying like, hey, what is he rolling for? Do I have to deny him? And it's in a spot where it's really powerful and no one's pressuring his life total enough to the point where he has to roll down a lot. 
The scariest part of playing this augment is when you're at like one or two lives and you feel like the all in and you don't have the gold to be able to, to roll more. But because he's already made it to level eight, the hardest part about it right now is just making sure to conserve his gold and not over roll. If he rolls a 10 here, uh, he's going to be in a spot where if he misses, he's just basically going to be done rolling for the rest of the game. If anything, this game shows you the power of economy. It's super important to make sure you're stacking your econ. Another Nautilus. So we're at five Nautilus, five Annie, six Elias five ashes five syndras probably gonna have to give up on certain things like i don't know if we're going to hit syndra three but he could also be doing it for two reasons which is griefing his opponent's syndras full bench by the way all these orbs are converting into gold which is a really good move again goes for a bow off the anvil so it could be for a giant slayer i don't think titans or edge of night is particularly very good rolling and now we're at seven narlises now we're kind of getting that territory where uh this is really scary for everyone else because knowledge three is very real but no one's going to go out of their way to play Nautilus right now because he's considered quite a awkward champion if you're not playing Mythic right now. And he's still just winning fights as standard, right? And it's crazy because he doesn't have anything like a strong combat augment outside of the Accomplice. And so he's still holding his own versus a lot of these other boards. That's Syndra number six. Rolling, that's Annie number six. That's Syndra number seven. That's Lilia number seven. That's Nautilus number eight. I think we have to give up on something. Going to sell the Nico and roll and now we're at eight lilias eight nautilus and we are at seven syndras six annies it's getting to the point where now we're just rolling multiple four cost and depending on when we hit uh it's just gonna be game over at this point all right so here we go he's praying he's smiling i think we're just gonna roll and see if we can hit a four cost three star and here we go the rolls and there you have it, Lilia 3. Oh, he's rolling for more. Oh, there you go, Nautilus 3. And now we're moving the items from Annie to Nautilus 3. One single four cost three star on their own maybe wins. Like a lot of times it does, but sometimes it doesn't. Two three star four cost. I mean, get out of here. This is something that you can only beat with probably three star legendary at this point just way too much value and way too much power and he's waiting for like the Syndra and ash play to die he took all the ashes in the Syndra on the pool his opponent can't hit this is just filthy like what are you supposed to do if you're a player that's looking for these units and the bag sizes are just stopping you from being able to hit it there's multiple faded players so he's actually grieving more than one Syndra player i just realized actually i think all the Syndras are out of the pool he can pick up the 10th nautilus if he wants if he wants to go for the full set completion and they're going for redemption i think he recognizes that he has enough power with the Lilia 3 and the Ash 2. As long as his frontline's good enough, he can win. He's opened up his team planner, and now I think he noticed that Morgana, yeah, and Kane are not contested. So <laughs> I guess he's saying like, hey, I pulled out so many of the other four costs. There's even more four costs that aren't being played right now. There's no Galio players left, right? Like orn has gone. Syndra is gone, but no one's playing Morg. No one's playing Kane. No one's playing Galia. So maybe my, my follow-up win condition from here is even the other four costs that aren't being pulled out of the pool right now. And that's what makes this augment kind of ridiculous. Like you're basically just constantly making sure that whatever you're playing is an uncontested lane. Felix calls down two component anvils. I think that's okay. I think it's probably just going to be any item here. That fast is fine. You can even hold on to this component anvil if you don't want to pop it. All right. Queuing up into the duelist three-star player going up against Gang, another person who's made it to the world championship four times. That eight second Nautilus stun is just keeping this Tristana locked in forever. Look at that DPS from Lilia. 10,000 damage. Just unstoppable. Look, I don't care how bad you think four costs are right now. If you're hitting multiple three stars of them, there's no way they're bad. One more time filling up his bench just to make sure that he can get that gold. And now we're off to the races. We're going to go ahead and start rolling and see if we can go for the Morgana three, the Galio three, the Silas three. Oh my God, it's happening. He probably won't hit Ash three because of the faded players. He's running into an awkward situation where he's hitting all of the units that he can't hold. He's limited by bench space at this point. He has Galio 2, Kane 2, Morgana 2 on the bench. It's so funny, man. He probably could have just been best served by only chasing a couple of these as opposed to four different ones. He's trying to chase like Ash 3, Annie 3, Galio 3, Morgana 3, and Kane 3. If he just only chased like two or three of them instead of five, it would have been better. I don't even know why I'm trying to min-max this like as if it's going to matter. He already won the game. Seven Annie's. And now we effectively rolled to zero, which I'm actually happy he did because it shows you the awkwardness of it. Now he's going to be at the point where he can't really make econ anymore. The most you'll be able to make is like, you know, like six, seven gold. And so the next turn, he only can roll three times. And hence why a lot of times that gold is a limiting factor. He can't even, he can buy something in the shop, but 
it's not going to be of any value. His opponents are selling the board, looking to see if there's any win condition they could find. But yeah, at this point, he rolls again a few more times. Oh, I guess unfortunate. He's only going to have uh, Lilia 3 and Nautilus 3. No Annie 3, no Galio 3, more, no Morgana 3. But at least he's got his free LP at this point. <laughs> his opponent's just playing set one. Close, real close, real close. <laughs> uh man the strength of his board after the game ended does not really sell just how strong actually his board ended up becoming so that's how you play everything must go it's a pretty insanely powerful augment and i'm pretty sure it's not going to stay as current form or even enabled for very long so make sure to go collect your free lp thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time